Alright, welcome. So in this video, we are going to continue our discussion of the dot product, this time talking about how it relates to the angle between vectors. So if we have theta to represent the angle between the vectors a and b, so these are our two vectors we're going to take the dot product of, then their dot product a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between them. So the reasoning for why this works involves using the law of cosines and triangles. I'm not going to walk through that argument here. You can look that up if you're interested, but hopefully you can believe this for now and take this as truth. And if you really want to see the sort of reasoning that goes behind it, you can look up that law of cosines rule. So I just want to clarify one thing here. So that dot that we have for the dot product represents the dot product, but it looks really similar to the dot that we use for multiplication. So just be careful that you kind of keep track of when we're using vectors or when we're using scalars and multiplying them as quantities. So on the left hand side, we're using the dot product of two vectors, that's our operation. But on the right hand side, we're just multiplying quantities since the magnitude is just some value and the cosine is just some value. So we're just multiplying numbers together on the right hand side. So the power in this way of looking at the angles between the vectors is that we can now solve for theta to find the angle between them. So we can write that cosine of theta is equal to a dot b divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. So I just am taking that equation and solving for cosine. I'm dividing by those magnitudes. Then I can take the inverse cosine operation, the arc cosine, and I'm getting a solution for theta. So theta is equal to the arc cosine of a dot b divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. So we're going to be talking more about the angles between vectors and how we do this with the dot product. So I just want to highlight something that we use a new vocabulary word for talking about vectors. So we say two vectors are orthogonal if the angle between them is 90 degrees or pi over two. So this would be like being perpendicular. If you had two lines that were perpendicular, there was a 90 degree angle between them. We say two vectors are orthogonal. So you can keep in mind that those two words are basically synonyms. We just have this specific word orthogonal that we use for vectors. Okay, so let's try an example so you can see how we can find the angle between vectors using the dot product. So let's find the angle between the vector 2, 5 and the vector negative 1, 1. So I'm going to label the first vector as a and the second vector as b and graph them here. So we're in two dimensions so I can graph 2, 5 and negative 1, 1. And I just want to keep this in mind as we're going through the problem, thinking about the angle. So the angle sort of looks like it's close to 90 degrees, but we're going to see in a moment that the angle is actually a little smaller. And this is a good reason why it's nice to have a formal computation for finding the angle between them, rather than just trying to guess by the picture that you draw. So we know that the cosine of the angle between the vectors is a dot b divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b by our new formula for this video. So I like to just find the individual components first and then put them together. So let's find the magnitude of a first and we'll go from there. So for the magnitude of a, I do two squared plus five squared in the square root. That's four plus 25 in a square root, which is the square root of 29. So that's my magnitude of a. I can do the same for b. So I do negative one squared plus one squared in a square root. That's one plus one, which is the square root of two. So I have my two magnitudes of my vectors 
And now I just need to take their dot product and divide it by the product of these magnitudes. So you could even do the dot product off to the side. I often do that as well, but I'm just gonna do it as part of the fraction here. So I'm doing that cosine of the angle is the dot product of two, five, and negative one, one, divided by square root of 29 times the square root of two. That's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. So I'm getting two times negative one plus five times one. That's the numerator, the dot product. And then for the denominator, I'm going to combine those square roots together. So I have the square root of two times 29. Then this is equal to negative two plus five for the dot product divided by the square root of 58. So I'm getting three divided by the square root of 58 for cosine of theta. And remember, I'm trying to find the angle between these vectors. So I'm gonna solve for theta. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine, arc cosine of three over the square root of 58. So I'm just taking the inverse cosine here to solve for theta. And I call this my exact answer. So this encompasses the complete solution. We haven't rounded, we haven't used a calculator. So this is the exact or precise answer, but it can be helpful to know the sort of approximate answer using a calculator to help us just get a sense for what angle this is. I have no clue what the arc cosine of three over the square root of 58 is just looking at it. So when I type it into a calculator, I'm getting approximately 66.8 degrees. And this would be my approximate answer. Moreover, this tells me that the angle between my vectors A and B is 66.8 degrees, which I definitely couldn't have told on my own just by looking at the graph. Okay, so that's an example of how we can use the dot product to find the angle between vectors. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.